Hello friends, welcome to today's session. I hope you've been good. The Lord has kept you safe this far. And uh, welcome as we delve into today's uh, intricacies when it comes to design. Uh, today we're going to do the design of columns in uh, Procon. And I hope you're going to learn something that you're going to use uh, to design columns when you have a project. Uh, now we will be using the British standard that is BS8110. I believe it's the 1995 version which uh, where part 2 actually deals with uh, concrete so we will be designing uh, concrete columns, uh, reinforced concrete columns in, in, in Procon so that you see the procedure. So uh, this is the Procon, uh, let me close it then open it once again so that uh, you're able to see yeah uh, you, you you can observe that once you running such uh, programs you need a good machine because if you have a computer that uh, is a bit slow uh, it might drag your work so you need an efficient computer so that you don't need to be logging in uh, now and then so uh, after you have opened this is uh, actually what comes first and then you move to concrete rectangular column once you click on rectangular column they open another page now here is where you are going to design your column to get um, guidelines on how to design your column you can uh, click here uh, it gives you an example of how they have designed a short column with uni axial bending hope you understand these terms such as uh, axial loads uh, uniaxial bending, biaxial bending, and these are basic terms in, in an engineering uh, structural design class. So I'm not going to dwell into that, but uh, if you feel like uh, you have forgotten something or you're not understanding something, you can look at these examples. They can guide you on how you're going to do uh, the input of your parameters. And uh, having said that, I'm going to close this and then start afresh. Because now uh, we're, go we're not going to use an example anymore. We're going to design a column from scratch. So after you opened it, the first thing you do is the title. Let's say this is the Bromtech, Bromtech column design. There we have our title. The next thing you do is you input your parameters. And uh, we had dealt with this uh, when we were dealing with load takedowns in columns in one of our previous uh, videos. And actually after this, uh, when I'll be uploading this video, I'll also um, send the link to the previous video on the comment section. So if you want to see where we did our loadings before, you can uh, look at the comment section and uh, you will find uh, a column load takedowns video there. So this, uh, that video will guide you on how you should do takedowns uh, uh, of your loads from the roof up, way down up to the foundation. Now a mistake that most engineers do is uh, they design columns up to the ground floor. They use the, the, the floor of the ground to design the column. But actually this is not a uh, good practice because... Uh, what about the column uh, section below the ground floor level? Uh, some sections, because of poor soils, we are forced to do uh, longer sections. We are forced to dig to uh, greater depths. So you might have a column below the ground uh, uh, level uh, going even up to 2 meters and there is no support system and uh, the soil is, uh, let's say, maybe expansive or it cracks and and or maybe there is even no soil and all these other requirements so whenever you design your column ensure you design a column uh, at the lowest level possible so that you get um, the, the, the the maximum moments and and uh, axial loads that your column is going to experience secondly uh, it is also good practice because of economy to consider designing your column in sections you need to um, segment your column if say you have a building that is 10 stories high 
it's good you design uh, the column at the foundation level you design the column after maybe four floors and then after let's say six floors and then that as you go up this will help you um give the column the reinforcement and the size it needs per that floor or that section for instance if a column needs 10 bars on the ground floor once you move to the end you may be doing wind and earthquake analysis once you move to the uh, fourth floor the axial load in the fourth floor will be reduced and then also when you add uh, you factor in the effect of seismic loading and 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 uh, wind loads you're able to get the total load at that fourth floor so if you design it you might find that that uh, reinforcement at fourth floor is going to be less as compared to the reinforcement at the foundation level as you go up let's say maybe you get to the last floor you are going to have very uh, uh, a very small value in terms of your axial loads because you're going to have uh, maybe the roof the roof is the only thing that is loading your column so you're going to have very little axial load and and maybe more, more effect of wind load and and such so uh, reinforcement uh, at maybe the 10th floor is also not going to be the same as reinforcement on the fourth floor so once you practice designing this of course it will take you more time but it will help you um consider or factor in economy when you're designing uh, columns i've decided to explain this and uh, and uh, before we delve into designing in procon because it is good we understand these basics so that we do not make simple mistakes designing in procon alone is not the skill the skill is to know how to design a column and to know how to be uh, to design structures that are safe and to design structures that are economical to build because right now when we look at the economics of the world um, things are not good uh, the prices of things are escalating and we need to have engineers who have uh, the cost uh, consideration of a project in mind so we don't only need to look at safety but cost is also convenient because it will help the client or, or the developer to build cost uh, uh, effective structures and also to be competitive uh, uh, current, uh, currently these days we have what we call competitive bidding where most jobs are given to considerably um, um, to, to contractors who quote uh, uh, cheaper prices that does not mean that you go and quote cheap uh, uh, to the extent that you're going to construct a structure that is not structurally sound but you have a, a consultant who can give you an economical design then you're going to convince the client and you're going to be competitive in the current job market so these are the, the, the skills that are probably uh, some engineers are overlooking and then we end up design over designing structures or and and these actually uh takes a toll on the clients and the developers or uh, sometimes we also factor in too much economy and safety is left to the wind so we should as engineers seek to balance between the two for instance if you're designing a 10 story structure and you realize that it's going to be very expensive to build it uh if you have used let's say solid slabs sometimes you need to go back and say uh, what if i use lighter systems what if i use hollow blocks for my walls and maybe i use uh, technologies like eps uh, expandable polystyrene slabs you see these are light and they are going to make my structure light which means they are going to make it a bit economical so we should have engineers who are exposed and ready to think through the process and not just use the conventional uh, uh, solid slab monolithic systems that we have we were taught uh, uh, way way back when we were in college or school so uh, having explained that i have taken quite some time explaining that and it was necessary to do that um, here we have uh, column load takedowns and i had taken us through this but i'm not going to uh, repeat and uh, the link is in the description uh, below 
So we looked at breast and unbreast systems and uh, as an engineer you should know what makes a structure braced or what makes it unbraced. And uh, we talked about framed structures and uh, load bearing structures and all that should be considered when you uh, thinking of designing your columns. And then the second thing we looked at was the effective length of our columns and how to determine the effective length. And we stated that we're using the British standard 8110 version, uh, part two. So table 3.19 and table 3.2 are very, very useful when it comes to determination of effective length of columns. Because when we determine effective length of columns from the British uh, code, there are four end conditions that we are supposed to consider and uh, first of all we're supposed to consider uh, whether the system has uh, stability uh, in terms of bracing and secondly we also consider the end conditions of our columns and it is um, possible to have a column that has a different end condition on the top and a different one uh, on the bottom so um, having said that uh, we looked at all this and we realized that most structures that we build uh, are so in my locality are of end condition one that was explained well and um, these are the extract tables from uh, the british code and then i think i think it's it's good we get the code let's see let's see what was the table that is table 3.19 and table 3.2 uh, let's get those tables. Yeah. Uh, let's get those tables so that uh, you are able to look at it when you want to design. Table 3.19. This is a scanned copy of the code. Is it really this one? Let me see. Let's see whether we are dealing with uh, the right document. Mm, this does not look like the right one. Yeah, let's see. Uh, it was a scanned copy, but. Uh, Let's see, let's check. It's good to have these uh, code in uh, printed so that you have a hard copy and you can uh, easily refer once you want to design an element. supposed to be something uh, here but uh yeah i believe uh, once i get the right document i will i will i will take you through but i believe you can get the british uh, 8110 version and you look at table 3.19 and table 3.20 uh, um, so i uh, i'm not sure whether this is the right one they wanted to refer to oh, this is the handbook to the code yeah so this is not the code uh, itself yeah so we cancel that and then uh, we will we will be able to find that maybe if we find the time at the end of this lecture I'll, I'll, we'll be able to download it online and have a look at those tables uh, so these tables are found in there and once you have identified your end condition at the top and at the bottom, then you are able to get your value of beta uh, that you will use to design to, to, to get uh, the effective length of that column. So, and uh, once you get that value and then you get the effective length, you are able to classify your column as either short or long. And I believe you all know uh, the difference between short and, short and long columns. 
and their failure mechanisms actually short columns fail by crashing and then uh, long columns fail by buckling but i believe if you've been to a structural design class that is a walk in the park so this is a these are our parameters that we had considered before and we did our load takedowns i hope you remember or if you do not remember check the video below or on the on the on the uh, whose link has been provided uh, in the description so we did this for this was uh, six floors and then we were able to get a loading of according to bsa 210 it was a loading of 1417.0077 kilonewtons and these contained live live and dead loads combined and the factors of safety all had been factored so this was our factored uh, ULS ultimate limit state uh, axial load in this example we were we did not do the shear um, uh, forces and the moments in our column but i'm going to show you how you get that from uh, another software you can model that in in a uh, a software like uh, orion or proto structures or revit or these other pro uh, structure um, softwares where you can model and then it will give you moments and loading for instance uh yes i had opened this i was working on a project at a place called ngong and uh let's say we are considering this column uh, i want to load the properties of the pad footing and then after loading the properties of the pad footing i can go to column loads and then these are the axial loads of this column at the footing level and then these are the shear forces both in the x and y direction and these are the moments and when you do the summation of all these you get these as the total uh, axial load so we will design this and we'll design the other one and we will see uh, the difference uh, having said that now we go back to procon yeah so uh, the system we designed had a braced column y is yes and n is no so if it is braced you do that and then end condition at the top we're going to do condition one which was fully fixed you can go through bsa 110 it has all these conditions and then you get an effective length factor of 0.75 if it was not braced you realize this reduces to 1.2 but if it's braced it is 0.75 so let's confirm whether this is right uh, we can go back to our table where was that yeah right here so we are talking for a braced system and condition one at the top and bottom you get 0 0.75 so in procon uh, sorry so in procon you have that if it is not braced you get 1.2 let's see unbraced and condition one and one you get 1.2 so that is how you maneuver here and as you're working you have this uh, input error section uh, if you have any error this is where you're going to note it and then once you change it you correct it or change it uh, and it disappears from here then you're good to go after that you move to the parameters the individual parameters that you're now going to use to design and uh, h is normally the longer side of the column H b is the shorter side of the column so you take a cross section of the column and then you use that so uh, h let's say we were dealing with a column what was our column size let's look at it from here a column size we had design parameters in these our last class column dimensions were 300 by 300 millimeters so we're going to have 0 0.3 because th uh, this is still in millimeters so we're going to have 300 which is a square column and 300 if it was a rectangular column where one side is longer than the other 
then h is the longer side and b is the shorter side then you have this uh, d x and d d prime x and d prime y uh, d prime x is the distance from the surface of the finished column to the center of the main reinforcement resisting the axial forces and moments for instance if you have um, this is not cover don't confuse this with cover this is the distance from the surface to the center of the main reinforcement so you do if let's say you have a cover of 40 millimeters in my call let's say 30 30 millimeters in my column then i have a link of 8 millimeters this link is what people forget so 30 plus 8 that is 38 then i have my main bars of uh let's say 16 millimeters half of 16 is 8 so i have 8 plus 8 that is the link uh, diameter plus 30 that comes to 46 so you can do 45 there you go and then it has been placed and you can see this is from the center of the bar to the uh, finished surface of the column and then you have in the y direction because our columns are uniform you can also do that so this means we have a cover of 30 millimeters remember once you're taking cover another mistake people make is they take cover from the main reinforcement forgetting that even the links are part of the reinforcement of that structure so once you're taking a concrete cover um, ensure you take concrete cover from this uh, um, most external back in your system whether it is a shear link whether it is a, a longitudinal or transverse reinforcement as long as it is still it must be covered by concrete uh, because actually what happens is if it is insufficiently covered and there is a moisture ingress to, to, to the element what happens when steel bonds with moisture um, you have a product that is formed which we normally call as rust as these bars rust the product formed is normally of a higher volume than the actual steel itself so that means you're going to have some um, increase in volume inside your column in, in the reinforcements. So if the product of rust is uh, uh, over more volume, uh, it starts to expand and then you start observing cracks and finally your element will fail. That is why uh, the issue of cover should be taken into consideration um, when you're designing your structures. And then uh, you have L0. Hope you remember we were saying that the reason why we did this is so that we get... Oh, sorry, this was braced. Yeah. So that we get the effective length factor that will be multiplied by the height so that we get the effective height. So here you take the height of your element, assuming our flow to flow height was 3 meters. You do 3 meters, and then you have your column sketch there. And then FCU is the... Uh, uh, grade or class of concrete that you're going to use in your structure and for such structures you can use 20 25 or 30 depending to other parameters like location of the site uh, cost uh, the ability to achieve that class the and all that so we're going to use class 25 there you go and then FY is the grade of steel you're using and uh, readily available in my country we have 500 we have 500 type 2 bars which are readily available in hardwares where we you can easily get them over the counter so this is how you enter these parameters I'm taking time to explain so that you understand each and every one of them so we don't just design this element and then you start copying a values from here uh, like this 45 eh? you start copying 45 and put in your element and then you say you've designed that element understand what this all this entails after that we now do our loads 
now uh, you can do as many load cases as possible and this system is going to design for each load case that you will do uh, for instance you can do load case one then description this is 1.4 dead load plus 1.6 live load and then you do your axial load so our axial load if we can get it what was it our axial load was 1417.077 uh, that is 1417.077 there you have your loads so uh, after having put my loads you can do your moments but remember in this case i had not um determined these moments at the top and at the bottom so i'm just going to leave it like that i'm, I'm going to assume that uh, my column is just axially loaded and that is what i'm designing for you can decide to do load case 2 and then you say 1.0 dead load plus 1.0 live load these are the serviceability uh, limit states so that you find uh, the effect of your loading on your column at serviceability so um, that is going to be what 870 870.255 add 124.2 that is 994.455 994.455 so there you go you have you now have um load case one and load case two you can decide to do load case three uh for load case three you can say maybe the dead load is um uh -huh. If you did not want to add this, uh, you can do the dead load separately and the live load separately. What was the dead load? Let me get it. 870.255. And then the live load is going to be 124.2. So there you have it. Uh, if you want to do load case 4 and on and on you can proceed but once you've done this and you do 4 when it is going to use load case 3 it's going to take all the parameters that will be within load case 3 but in this case i want us to just design with load case 1 uh, because we normally design our columns according to the uh, ultimate limit states First of all, before you start designing, you check there are no input errors, and then now you can proceed. So you go to design. Uh, once you click design, you get this. Then you can observe your charts here, and then you 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 observe your maximum moment is 283.9 kilonewton meters at 450 kilonewtons. Uh, for the y-axis, you also have that. I want you to observe something. Eh? This is 283.9 and this is at 450. 283.7 and this is at 450. So uh, you realize that these values are actually the same. So it's because our column is uh, of the same dimensions in uh, both axes. And um, it is actually loaded. So we don't, we've not uh, input any moments. And then uh, once you get here, you can now look at this design. And uh, you have the top. We have not input any moments. If you had moments, you can uh, input them here. Or if you have not uh, designed for them, you can also include your moments at this section so uh, n is right there and then you have load case 1 and uh, you can observe a column is analyzed and then uh, and what actually I don't know let me check something I've uh, seen something here 
Yes, I remember mentioning the British standard uh, 8110, the 1985 version. But uh, I think we are now designing with the 1997 version. So you can check this. Eh? You can check this. This is what we are using in this uh, software. You can check this instead of checking the 1985 one. This is a bit more updated. And uh, you have uh, area of steel and all that. So you can check the next uh, load case. You can check the next load case, but it is telling you the critical load case at this point. Yeah, the critical load case is case number one. Then area of steel is 1420. Then you have um, area of steel divided by the cross sectional area. You have that. Then, yeah, area of steel. Yeah, try that. So once you are satisfied that all this is okay, you can actually add your moments. Eh? Uh, and uh, in the middle, we normally have moments tending towards zero. So you cannot add moments here let's say you have a moment of 3.1 this one you will now have to add if they exist 3.2 i'm just doing this so that you can see what happens to these diagrams here oh sorry Low. yeah there you go so uh i want us to do let's say 2.9 0 yes and then 3 and maybe 2 yeah so you can uh, see this is at the top and then this is 3.1 assuming now they are the same huh? 2 uh, 2.8 so you can add them like this and then proceed with this moment 2.4 yeah, you can uh, do this and then proceed with uh, this calculation. But if you want to have uh, diagrams for additional moments here, you can you can you can you can input your values here. So after that design, you move to calculation sheets. Uh, before the calculation sheets, you get to the bending schedule. This is now where you're going to design for your reinforcement. Uh, when you get here, uh, this is the section file where this is going to be stored. And then the diameter of my corner bars is 20. Remember, I had taken 16. And then number of middle bars about the XX, I have one. Number of middle bars about the YY, I have one. So I'm going to have a column uh, like this one, where we have four corner bars and then one bar at the middle of each, each, each axis in each direction so um, after doing that uh, then you do level at bottom level at top because our height was three meters that is okay link diameter spacing hope you remember the rule you take the minimum di bar diameter and then you multiply by 12 for instance 16 by 12 comes to 192 so that is the maximum link spacing therefore i can use 175 after that i choose the link type i want from all this then i i i, I just want a simple one i want which one let me say i want one cover on the links now this is the cover we were talking about the other time i had assumed the 30 that is okay and then lap length factor lap length factor for columns even 40 can work I mean 40 the first bar mark i want it to be a number zero one and then english is the language so having done this you, re you see i have entered reinforcement that is less than the required that means i need to increase my reinforcement uh, if i do 20 millimeter bars see this the entered reinforcement is more than the required so uh, that means i'm able to i have been able to design my column successfully and uh, uh, the nominal 
is the minimum required within that section which is 360 and means I've been successful where I'll have uh, 20 millimeter bars on the corners and then 16 millimeters bars at the centers I can even decide to do zero here meaning I'm having only one one side and then I change this to 20 to see whether it's going to pass uh, it is sufficient only in one axis so 16 is okay let's do that 16 is okay so yeah we've designed this and it is uh, sufficient after doing this um, now I can generate my bar bending schedules and I can even go to my calculation sheets so bar bending schedules I can overwrite whatever is existing yes then it will generate for me a bar bending schedule of my reinforcement let's wait as it is loading yeah it has generated it but it 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 has not been shown here yeah it has been saved in the file that we saw but our main main interest is actually designing this column to find the reinforcement required and uh you can now move to the calculation sheets but uh hope you have uh, appreciated that we now know the reinforcement we need if we pick a column of 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters we are going to need and the axial load we have we are going to need this reinforcement for it to be sufficiently designed so uh, now you can see it has been generated hope you know how to read these bar bending schedules uh, you can observe that I have 4 Y20 when we normally used to use Y for twisted bars but th th these days we use T T is for the ribbed or deformed bars so when you see Y just know that it's still uh, uh, the bar that we use today it's not the old one so don't say that the software is updated or what so uh you have the bars the length the total numbers to be cut and then this is the bar mark that you are assigning to each bar and uh this is the these are the lengths that it is going to be cut and uh, of course they provide uh, a drawing they provide a drawing here yeah and uh you have your bars 0 1 and t20 bars 0 2 and 0 3 at 16 bars and then you have your links at 175 spacing and then you have your main bars at 420 and then these bars have been done what we call juggling at this point hope you remember the rules of juggling we did them before and then you have tie links and remember that you need to have more tie links here as compared to other sections of the column and uh, another rule of the column you should also observe when tying this on site remember minimum moments in a column are experienced towards the center so your bars should be lapped towards the center and not more than 50 percent should be lapped at one point so you should uh, do what you call staggering and uh, I had we had discussed that before so then you have your details there so I'm going to close this and as we proceed with our, our work here so you have seen the generated schedule then you can look at the calculation sheets it's compiling what to give us uh, you can before you print it you can uh, go to settings and then you insert what you want to appear you can even do the input tables, design charts, and all that. And then you press OK. Then uh, there you have your design uh, calculations that you can print for the local authorities. Uh, for you to change the details here, you right click. And then you go to edit header. So you can change the job number, let's say 001 job title it's a bomb tech column and then you have the client the client is the youtuber 
YouTube subscriber and then the calculations by this is engineer on Tsongo our trainer uh, they have been checked by we have engineer Mukoma who is uh, one of the directors of our company and then the date when is the date the date is 11 and then you have 5 and then you have 2023 and uh, uh, Actually, it's good. Let's honor one of our subscribers. Today, we are going to do... Let's say uh, we have a client called Eric. Eric Nyasinga is one of our clients. Yes. And you do... Okay. There you have... You have calculations designed for all these people. Then, uh, yeah, you see there you have it yes so you see they have uh, designed the good thing with uh, these software they do the manual designs here and you're able to observe them and then you can check from the t code these are the tables that have been used from the bs code yeah right there you can find out the slenderness of the column then minimum moments that have been used for our design remember we did not input our moments but using our axial load and uh, the heights of the column they are able to determine the moments of design and then uh, you also have these charts these charts are also in the code uh, then you have the area of steel required and then you have the critical load case and it ends there so uh, normally when you use these output settings you see it has given you the analysis results of the column and once you go to the output settings you do not have um, the results of the reinforcement used so you can print these and then print the other tables and attach them to this so that one is able to see that and actually that is what i noticed uh, with this that you have to include there later on so you can decide to send this to the calc pad or you print it and then once you print it you're good to go yes uh, it's still loading still sending to the calc pad but you can print it okay let's say eric eric column when you use eric column then you can let's save it in the desktop let's see open many tabs yes let's see in our desktop where it is you have eric column now you have your design calculations but i have as i have told you you have to print the other tables and then attach them to this yeah so yeah let's close that and then for this one let's also you see now here you have your moments and then you have your summation of uh, that but this is at the base what about the other column sections uh, you can go to columns if you're using these process structures then you get one column and then you go to reports uh, list column forces eh? and uh, you can say maybe are they found it no let's list all columns and then you list them you see uh, with this now you have column c1 then you have these load combinations so you can uh, pick let's say you've picked this this b is bottom and this is top 
I have taught you how to use plotter structures and how to model columns and up to the design level of this. So if you've designed, hope you can get this. Once you see now you can get M22 and M33. That means you can get moments at the top and moments at the bottom. And then you can use these moments to design the columns. Uh, these moments and these shear, uh, these axial loads to design the columns in, in, in Pucon. So um, I'm giving you the assignment. You can try it out. Try using a column of um, let's see, let's see which is the critical one. We have this eleven sixty three. Oh, twenty twenty six must be a huge one. Yeah, use that one. Use this. Uh, column of 500 by 500 and then use this and then in the moment you do this for one axis and this for the other axis these are the shear 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 forces of that section which um, this software does not really take care of because it has moments at the top and moments at the bottom and I have shown you where to get them from uh, sometimes when you're calculating this manually it becomes hectic so it's better you get another software that can help you do the modeling and then the good thing is uh, for softwares like Proto structures you can always design it and um, compare the reinforcement in both softwares so um, ensure you do that just practice and you will easily get to learn these things so um, um, having designed a column you have seen the design calculations i want us now to open to download the the bs8110 we are going with part two let's see Sometimes you can get it for free, sometimes you have to buy it. See this in the nineteen eighty five version. Let's see. Structural use of concrete, yes it's the one but now but we get it. Accept all. Yeah. Oh, we can. Let's see. Let's even go through this. Uh, we had the table 3.19. Wow, it might load forever. That is the problem of reading this online one. You have to wait for it. But at your own time, because now this is going to waste time. You see, this is the 1985 we are talking about. Huh? At your own time, um, this is for practice for special circumstances sorry let's do part one bs 8110 part one yes this is the right one you see it is already downloaded that means we have it somewhere within our system now getting it, it's, it's a bit difficult. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we have it. Code of practice for design and construction. Yes, the 1997 version. So don't use the 1985, use the 1997 version. Uh, we're going to look for table 3.19. Table 3.2. Let's double three point one two. 
two. Let's look for it. Four three point one nine. This is one three one five one eight. There you go. Yes, this is table 3.19. So look for this code. Hope you remember this is the exact uh, uh, tables we had. They're here. Let's just try here. They're here. Yes. In our notes. And you can read the end conditions. You can look at how to get slenderness. And then moments and forces in columns. And on how to do this, all these things manually. So thank you very much. I hope you have learned how to, to design a column in Procon. And after this, we're going to save our work. And then let's save it at the desktop. We call it um, YouTuber. YouTuber. YouTuber column. Yes. So we have our YouTuber column then once we want to change something in the design we can always go back so thank you very much you have uh, been with us uh, throughout today's lesson hope you have learned and this knowledge is going to help you in the design of columns uh, continue keeping in touch with us next we are going to do the design of pad footings and uh, we're going to show you how after now you have designed your column how you're going to transfer the loads to the pad footing and design the foundation system that is going to support that column. Continue believing in us. Give us your projects. We will handle them for you. We will do project management, structural design. Our firm is fully fledged. We have architects, uh, project managers. We have quantity surveyors and all those. So we do training and management of uh, construction sites and uh, we have adopted a system that is called design build where we design structures and we build them but there is a provision for an external reviewer to review our work so that is how much we trust ourselves thank you and uh, may god bless you adios